right, ready? Mm -hmm. We're just gonna give it a try and see what happens. Yeah. And then if it um, is a failure, we'll just have lunch. <laughs> One, two, three. You did it. I did it. Hi everybody, I'm Tom and this is Diana Rose Harper and we are having a 15 minutes of fume. Won't you join? Normally, our co-hosts throughout this series of videos have been the, uh, the lovely Galen, uh, he of the um, constantly renewable facial expressions. Now that we are so vaccinated, so vaccinated, we are opening up to a series of co-sniffers, and Galen is present, and you will sense him in the directorial and editorial process. Um, perhaps unconsciously. So how fun for everybody. Oh, wow. So uh, we are here today at long last after a bit of a break to sniff and discuss the perfumes, uh, the officially licensed perfumes, I should add, created in collaboration with author Peter S. Beagle for his book, The Last Unicorn. Mm -hmm. And I am here with Diana, who is a brilliant astrologer, poet, seeker, dreamer, perfume sniffer. If you follow her anywhere on social media, which you absolutely should, you will find that she, you know, somewhere between constantly and sporadically shares a lot of perfume content, mm -hmm. uh, including a lot of BPEL content. So she's someone that you should know. And now you do. We were talking before about The Last Unicorn, and you had oh, said that yeah. you had seen the movie a million times, but you hadn't read the book. Right, so as a kid, I've watched the VHS to shreds. Right, so The Last Unicorn, The Point, and The Labyrinth were the movies that I watched to shreds <laughs> on VHS. That's how one becomes an astrologer. Actually, though, that would be a worthwhile investigation. Like, what VHS did you watch to shreds? Yes. And what's your job now? What did you watch to shreds? Um, well, The Last Unicorn, I did not watch to shreds because we watched a lot of, you know, Disney, obviously, but my parents were very sloppy about what they'd rent. And when they brought The Last Unicorn home, I had this strange sense of like, I'm not supposed to be watching this. Ooh. It had a lot of like strangeness and edge and it just was, did not feel like it was for kids. It's and not really a children's movie. No, like, and when Molly Grew was like, damn you, and I was a kid, I was like. And that, that scene also, like with Molly Grew, which whenever I was reading the book, so, you know, read the book very recently, it's extremely similar to the movie. They did a great job at translating the book to a movie. Um, but that scene with Molly Grew, you don't, it's like one of those things that you will not fully appreciate until you yourself have lost some amount of your youth. Right? I, don't, I don't know what it's you're talking about. so intense. I hope to one day understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even just a tiny fraction of youth loss. Um, I feel it maybe on the horizon, but yeah, uh, it's, no. It's looming. No, you're correct. Yeah. I think that's also why this book is so timeless, because there are like such a interesting range of perspectives included mm. in the, all of the different fairy tale characters and it could be so one note but like at different points in your life you have felt like one of these characters or mm -hmm. more and it, every time you read it there's mm -hmm. some new perspective where you're just like oh no yeah it's highly relatable and sometimes painful in its relatability for sure yeah yeah well in terms of what vhs i watched to shreds I taped the uh, movie Sybil starring Sally Field about uh, the famously controversial case about the woman with multiple personality disorder. I taped it off of television and with the commercials edited out and I watched it over and over and over and over again until it was time to leave for Bible camp and then I came home and continued watching it over and over and over. So, you know, different tracks, but... A TVH makes sense. I, it, it's it it hurts a little how much sense it makes. Yeah. Um, so uh, tell me, so you're new to reading this book. I'm did new you, to reading it. Did you finish it? it? I did. I mean, it was a really quick read. Yours is. Um, I think the print in mine must be larger. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, it's very quick. This is not the cover I was hoping to buy, but this is what happens when you prioritize used books. <laughs> it's true. You just um, never know what you're gonna end up with. Yeah. I was like this one. It was like you know. It's fine. I was. I like that one. I was envisioning. Um, this doesn't exist, but I wanted to exist. I was envisioning like a black leather bound one mm. with just like a very simple like silver unicorn stamp on the front. 
Like, if anybody out there is going to make that, please tell me. I want it. I think you can make it for yourself or have it made. You just can't share it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you could, like, I, because I was, like, thinking, I would love to have a book like this yeah. written in, like, script, like, actually, like, handwritten, like, uh... Like manuscript style? Yeah, like, an illuminated Ooh. text, and how great that would be. That would be brilliant. Um, but, like, you know, you, I feel like a personally reproduced copy of something. I look at us, like, I'm, like, in a video for officially licensed stuff telling you how to bootleg. Oh, this is not about bootlegging. This is about deeply appreciating <laughs> the text by housing it in an even more beautiful container for mm. oneself. Well, I think that is an excellent segue into discussing perfumes. Right, which is a way to house a story in a deeply beautiful way. In a humble five milliliter amber apothecary bottle. Yeah. So a little bit of the story of this collection. We had done these perfumes, gosh, is it a decade ago? And so most people who know the book and the author now know um, Peter S. Beagle went through a really large um, elder abuse case with his like past representation. The less said about that, for our purposes, the better. However, the lab at that point, um, when we became aware of these uh, matters, we shelved the collection because we wanted to make sure we were supporting the author. And that meant that it was just basically the collection was in limbo for a really long time. And uh, Peter was successful in his case, which is incredible. And as a result of, you know, gaining back, you know, financial and legal agency over all of these things, we were able to restore the collection. A portion of the of every scent uh, goes to Peter. Uh, he's been really wonderful at helping us promote the scent online. So you should definitely also find him on social media. It's just really nice that he's still out there and is just getting the recognition he deserves for this book, uh, which became so many people's favorite movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the the collection of scents are in some ways slightly tweaked or reformulated be from the earlier iteration. Mainly it's because we're just like a decade onward dealing with different access to ingredients. Mm -hmm. We're an indie company and we source stuff from all over the world. So we just wanted to make sure we were putting out the best version of whatever we can do with these now. So they're not like terribly different. Um, and if you're comparing them to, if you have a bottle from a decade ago, and you're comparing side by side with a new bottle, it's going to smell different anyway. Because the old ones have aged, and that's one of the beautiful things about <sighs> Epal is so many of the scents age gorgeously. They're aging better than some of the rest of us. Speaking of youth. My perfumes only aged so much during quarantine, whereas I, on the other hand, you know, just like, do you want to go through these, like, mm -hmm. one at a time? Um, I've got them laid out like in the order they're on the site. So the first one we're doing is Mommy Fortuna. Mommy Fortuna, who is such an intense character, <sighs> like absolutely brilliant, just clearly somebody who has figured out how to be in a world that is very harsh. And also, like, is a, literally a purveyor of fantasy. Yes, just like the author, which is interesting. Yeah. It's like all of the characters are kind of an avatar for him. But um, also what's really interesting is that w there was a while where they were talking about doing a film remake, and Angela Lansbury provided the voice of Mommy Fortuna in the movie, and I believe early on they were going to try to bring her back in as the harpy and cast Ooh. somebody else's mom. I thought, it, and maybe I'm wrong, but that was the talk for a while. That would be fascinating, just like conceptually, like if Marmy Fortuna because oh, no, I'm not gonna give any spoilers. I'm just googling real quick to see if I'm full of beans. So good. Um, what's funny is I googled Angela Lansbury Harpy, and all that's coming up is Angela Lansbury Harvey, related oh. to with conversations related to Weinstein, which is like a tangent that I don't feel we need to explore. But the mm -hmm. scent is honey, gunpowder, dried herbs, and pleonectic two penny magics. Mm. Yeah, there's very much a, like, just like on the immediate whiff, it's like, um, the stickiness of, like, being at a carnival where there are, like, there's, um, kettle corn available as well as, like, freshly candied apples, like, that really caramely scent, mm -hmm. but instead of being pure sugar, there's, like, a... It's corrupted. Yeah, it's corrupted, but it's, like, it's not corrupted as in rancid, so it's a really heady, like honey scent. Like I remember this mm -hmm. from the original times. It's a real, there's a really strong honey scent, but it definitely like 
the sort of like pleasantness, like the sweetness of the honey is very impacted by the gunpowder for sure. Where there's an element of danger that's just like right below the surface. It's it's so a recent thing that I've been doing just like to put on salads is chopping up almonds and cooking them in a pan with like oil and like balsamic vinegar. Um, and so they get kind of sweet, but it's it's reminding me of the time that I put in way too much smoked paprika. Ah. But like in a good way. Yeah, there is like definitely kind of like a smoky crackle happening in this. And like a like a like something that you wouldn't expect to be there. But that yes. also makes complete sense. Right. It's like um, mm. getting like a cookie from like a nice old lady and then there are like things in it, you know, like that you didn't expect. And you're just suddenly like, there's this thing as a kid mm. when you become really aware, especially when dealing with neighbors or people where you're just like, oh, other people operate by entirely different rules. Yeah. Or like, um, I remember when, I don't know if this is still a concern because I do not interact with children with any level of regularity. Um, but you remember whenever people were like very concerned about, um, Halloween candy having yes. like sharp things yes. in them, like deadly things. So it's like that. It's like sweet and like maybe deadly. I always felt like kind of ripped off as a kid because I never found anything like that in my candy. And I felt <laughs> like I wasn't having like a real Halloween experience right. because no one was actively trying to kill me. I think it's because I watched that scene in Meet Me in St. Louis too many times where she believes that she's like people are trying to kill her on Halloween I'm like looking at Galen while I say this because he's laughing you know what I'm talking about oh there's... there's like a wood scent that comes out as soon as it's on my skin at least like um like um like a freshly downed pine branch mm -hmm. but not piney maybe cedar there is definitely something kind of a sticky resiny situation that's like floating up immediately when when mm -hmm. I first encountered this perfume earlier in my bee pal journey a long time ago I didn't well, I couldn't really wear honey scents. They kind of got to me. I've come a long way since then in terms of my exploration and my own like mm -hmm. gender journey. And like, there's something about this now. It really reminds me of that honey, black lilies, and gardenia petals that we did for Lupercalia. Just in terms of it being like really sweet and sinister, and it's like, trying to like bowl you over with like charm in a way. But then there's just something about that like where you know there's like lots beneath the surface yeah no this is making me wonder what the new harpy is gonna smell like <sighs> honestly because beth is a genius and i imagine these two scents mirroring each other the way like the devil and the lovers mirror each other we have tarot. the old one here do you want to smell it yeah yeah <laughs> isn't it right there galen yeah okay. this is the, now granted again uh, this is not this exactly is the like the uh the, the new one will be and i have the notes right here So that is, I think it's changed a lot over time, just so yeah. you know. It There's says, also like literally nothing in this bottle anymore. Oh, wait. But, yeah, that's the one. What kind <laughs> of like <laughs> evil has entered your soul that you could smell the harpy perfume and you're like, oh, it doesn't smell like anything. <laughs> the notes are clanging metal, smoldering hatred and terror, vetiver, myrrh, patchouli, tolu balsam, black clove, bergamot, orange flower, and horseradish. Oh my God. What is... You know, like your classic metallic clove horseradish perfume. Whoa, the horseradish is really, like, that is wild. It is, a, a like, an unearthly experience. So that this, is genius. Not currently available, but in an upcoming round, because be we're available. releasing these in groups of yeah. five. So will be available. Something to look forward to. Oh, my <laughs> to God. To look forward to, you say about the horseradish perfume. No, seriously, I feel like it just, you know how horseradish, like, cleans out? Your sinuses oh yeah like i feel extremely refreshed but also slightly on edge <laughs> remember um in uh was, was one of the jackass movies where they dared one of the guys to snort wasabi <laughs> and then he just immediately of course he did it and then immediately threw up everywhere yeah it's not like that it's not like that no it's much more uh clean than, <laughs> um okay so I, like so the reason why i said that though is like the like the sweet but sinister like it's you know those chimera creatures that are you know like seductive lady in part and then like terrifying in mm -hmm. other parts so now the harpy and the last unicorn is not seductive lady in part at all whatsoever right but like the sphinx quality like yeah it's almost like to a degree madame fortuna is the seductive lady not in like the sexy seductive but in the like let me pull you into this experience she's literally a seducer of yeah. creatures and people yeah 
Ooh. And uh, one thing I have to say too is that while I don't know, like this on the skin definitely smells like magic oils and we sell a lot of them specifically mm. made for magic and I don't really know what's doing it but it definitely has that like botanica like witchcraft shop smell as the honey fades away there's like it's almost like there's like a dusty resinous you know yeah it's like um it actually is it smells like a honey jar smell yes that's right um which is again like that seductive quality which depending on why why and what and who you're doing the seducting could maybe be slightly sinister now i want to do a honey jar spell just for fun what are you going to attract um I whatever think. i want <laughs> it's like um bratty teenage girl magic yeah all of the things i want like the craft man that is so dangerous um i want everything i want mm, do you okay so while we're in the realm of <laughs> magical um operant characters, uh, Schmendrick, the magician. Y'all know Schmendrick. Uh, he is the human figure who emerges as like the first ally of the last unicorn. Mm -hmm. We all had a Schmendrick in our life. We unicorns. Yeah. Um, it's and sure, we don't necessarily talk to that person anymore, but um, they were there for us when it mattered. Yeah, and so this is actually brings up an interesting thing, where it's like Schmedrick has ulterior motives, which are more clear in the book mm -hmm. than they are in the movie. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who've only seen the movie, you get more backstory on Schmedrick in the book. The notes are, it says, unexplored potential, sweet, raw tobacco leaves, chamomile, clary sage, meadow sage, Two sages. <laughs> Mysore sandalwood, sultana raisins, raisins, and uh, caramel. So, first of all, I, I just want to assure you right off the bat that this is not a super raisiny perfume. Mm -mm. Also, I just think it's funny that in America people treat raisins like garbage, whereas in other cultures they're just like dried grapes and are among like some of the most delicious delicacies. They're so good. Yeah. So like, you know, don't hate the raisin. Oh, wow. In the bottle. So green. All the sage, the two sages are really just bursting forward. Also the raw tobacco leaves, because it's not even trackable to me as tobacco. I'm just getting the raw leaves. Yeah. And I mean, just thinking, thinking even about like, um, like unmatured nicotine. Yeah. Right. Which actually relates really well to the character of Schmedrick and that like, he is perpetually green, mm. right? And that's like a sh one of the things that comes out in the book. Like the reason why he appears so young is because he was kind of cursed to look a certain age forever until he, yeah, perfect <laughs> example here, look a certain age forever um, until he accomplished a particular, basically test of character, mm. right? We don't have those anymore. Um, test of characters? Yeah. yeah. That's just some topical humor. We, we just have lots and lots and lots of immature adults. Right. And then, like, <laughs> lots of Twitter threads explaining why you're not allowed to judge anyone on any basis. Ever. Um, what I get wow. here... Yeah, like, uh, I am detecting the sandalwood, but there really is, like, this... I think that, like, um, potential is, like, this great... I mean, it has, like, this mm -hmm. lively scent that just smells like, like greens and herbs um, bursting forth. And yeah. then I want the sweetness to come out. I'm hoping, let me get a little more of that mm -hmm. actual oil. I'm going to put some on the skin because yeah. I want it to be there. Yeah. I don't remember ever trying this one on before. Again, it's been a really long time since these came out. And when I was first exploring with perfumes, I was much pickier because it was like, I mean, now it's like, of course, fast forward like 10 years later, I could be like one of those people with like basically like a Rubbermaid full of Bee Pal. And I'm like, each of these is special and has its own particular um, reason for existing I mean, in my life. it's true. Right. Every single one is different somehow. Where you start is a whole different thing. You know, it's it's making me think, like, one of the images that's coming to mind is, like, somebody who just, um, like, walked through a meadow and maybe picked some things just, like, kind of youthfully, but mm -hmm. then is coming back somewhere where, like, the smell of sandalwood incense is lingering from, like earlier in the day 
Yes, like in the clothes. Yeah. This to me, it to me it seems like maybe like the male counterpart of that, uh, the woman at the edge of the woods perfume we did for Ooh. Dead Blondes and Bad Mothers, which yes. was like a uh, like this scent of like feminine, like dark feminine power. Like and, dark feminine, but will help you heal a cut. Yes, even though they might be the person who cut you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like they, they sold the knife that cut you to the person who cut you. And now they will, for a small fee, they will heal the wound. Yeah. Um, but there is just something like there's like mm. a real kind of wisdom in the scent that I think is the clary sage mixed with the um, tobacco and sandalwood. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of wholesome. Um, it's very clean. Yeah, it right? is. Like, there, like there's, a, there's an integrity there. Clean, but kind of like um, bucolic and old world, you know, like. Yeah. Like, the idea of, like, a clean person in, like, a sort of a Middle Ages type fairy tale. Right. So, like, clean probably still smell fun- smells funky by today's standards. <laughs> right, right, right. There's, like, a but hippie... Like... There's definitely, like, a hippie quality to this, uh, for sure, between the sage and the chamomile and the sandalwood and the raisins. Like, how could... Yeah. How could there you not know, be... I'm like, not really think... getting the sweetness, are you? I'm not really getting any sweetness either, but I wonder if that's because Mommy Fortuna had such a clear sweetness yeah it. so by contrast schmedrick is like less obviously sweet that makes a lot of sense you've done this before what smelled perfumes in series yeah, yeah. like in, a, in, in like, like a, mm. a whole collection like at yeah once. yeah th- this is really reminding me of like the um the lunacy events and like you know yes. taking notes on like what did you put where this is kind of what we're doing here is like letting people lunacy vicariously through us because yeah. you since you can't wander around with a notepad trying to keep track of your arms where you put what you just get to watch someone else do it mm-hmm. um, i don't i don't mind at all i do sense like i think that the the caramel is kind of bonding to the sandalwood a little bit and just kind of enhancing there's like it's just kind of a, like a rich musky sweetness it's not like a candy smell Mm-mm. as it's you know it's like um the image that's coming to mind right now like of like this this figure is like somebody who is trying to figure out herbal magic and that's why they smell like a bunch of different green things and also does regularly burn incense but like like single note incense versus like nag champa that's like yeah. a collection of things um and also always has candy in their pockets because their metabolism is too fast <laughs> and so they have to always have like immediate blood sugar support they get the munchies i can imagine schmendrick getting the munchies otherwise he gets hangry yeah like a hangry magician sounds like a bad it weirdly is sweetening up on my skin even as we're talking which is kind of the opposite of how a lot of scents go where the sweeter stuff burns off faster and with this i love that it's kind of blooming up underneath and there's Mm -hmm. like a little kind of interesting vulnerability coming up out of it so it's reminding me a little bit of the blue moon scent from Ah. two years ago that was super green had like a bunch of time and things like that in it. It was like the Libra Blue Moon. Sure. From that year. Do you remember that one? Uh, I don't remember anything. I mean, I know. This doesn't have the time. What like you're saying sense, makes but, sense. Yeah. But I trust your interpretation. I mean, that's why it's so important to have multiple people sitting here on the couch because mm-hmm. if it's just one person, it's like after a while, I feel like I'm in some kind of Jacob's Ladder situation where I'm like, am I even conscious? <laughs> am I in flashbacks at the point of death? Just like grasping at memories before an audience Hmm. it's a different show there's a reason why that's in the horror section (laughs) so um now we go on to the butterfly um the most annoying character in the movie but these are not licensed for the movie they are licensed for the novel Right. So I, mean, I always tell the... people who haven't seen the movie, like, you just have to outlast that beginning butterfly scene. Oh my god, I love the butterfly <laughs> so much. It's a lot, though. I mean, yeah, the it's butterfly like... is very extra, but, like, the butterfly, <laughs> honestly, so in people, for, like, for people who get Last Unicorn references whenever I'm sitting in astrology sessions, if they have Gemini placements, especially Gemini Moon, it's like... The butterfly is your BFF, like the butterfly from The Last Unicorn, of just like being able to go all different sorts of places, really shallow, really deep, like spontaneously bursting into song. And I appreciate like a, you know, like a, you know, Bill Bailey, you know, Broadway reference, like for sure. It's just funny because it kind of like, the movie isn't a musical, but it was definitely out there in a world where it was competing with a lot of fantasy musicals. Yeah. And so right at the beginning, you've got like opening song and then this butterfly shows up and just starts going on like a crazy, like medley. Yeah. And it's It's like, it doesn't necessarily sell what the movie will be. 
No. It's... But there is a really... The, so the other song in the movie, like towards the end, mm-hmm. with Amathea and um, Prince What's-His-Face. Lear. Le- no, that's King Lear. No, King no, Haggard. Oh, no, King Haggard and King... Yeah, Prince Lear. Prince Lear, you're correct, um, who I find extraordinarily boring. <laughs> um, but there's like a song that happens. That's the one that I find cringy in the movie. Which is funny, too, because that's when the movie should be, like, building, like, an intensity, and you're just like, there's this song, and you're like, all right. Now I'm going to go get some popcorn. (sighs) I mean, uh, there were fewer movies back then. You just had to make the best of it. (laughs) The Butterfly Scent is Fuzzy Brown Tonka Bean, Golden Amber, Bergamot, Nutmeg, and Petty Grain. That sounds so good. I love that there's a kind of a general tone of these scents, where it's, like, very oriented in fantasy and, like, a very woodland setting but with sparkles man that combination of like nutmeg and i think tonka bean i feel like that is like a weirdly accurate estimation of cardamom somehow Mm. because i mean it's it's funny there's no cardamom in there but it smells cardamomy to me i see it i can see it with my smell brain i getting i'm getting something that is like really kind of like uh almost effervescent Mm -hmm. and i it's the bergamot I bet it is. I bet it is. And then I think the the amber can do that sometimes too, mm-hmm. me- mixed with other things. I love this. It's like I'm having airborne. feelings right now. Yeah. I'm sending you home with all these bottles after I'm, we're filming, by the way. I might dump this on my head. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so good. Wait until you review the other fragrances, please. I will. I promise. So I mean, oh, there there definitely so is something like just kind of like really woolly and soft. It's more. It's like um. It's like a butterfly that's a little bit. Mothier mm-hmm. than um, I don't know um, flashy, I guess. Like, like this is definitely like the butterfly from the book versus the butterfly from the movie. Like the butterfly from the movie, I think oh, yes. would be a lot more like magenta in right. the scent. Yeah. Right. Relic like, robust. This is like weirdly. So there is an opportunity with these mm-hmm. notes in particular that it could be like really earthbound, mm-hmm. um, especially if it's like fuzzy brown tonka bean, etc. But like, there's something about it that is definitely sent aloft. It's like a, it's like a, like a warm uplift of air that facilitates the butterfly's flight. It oh. almost has like an aldehyde quality, I think. Aldehyde. Yeah, that's like the old, like a perfume component that was popularized in the 20th century. Am I correct? Where it's just like, I'm trying to think of an example from BPAL that really has it. Um, but those, maybe you can help me explain in the comments. Media from. Um... Oh, like me. Yes. American Gods and also Lady Hat. Oh, here, I'll let you smell Diana so that you. Yeah. I'm going to fan us while you smell a completely tangential. Tangential perfume. scent. So there's like a really soapy smell to this. Yeah. Is that the aldehyde? It's like a weird, kind of like soapy, clean, airy. Yeah. Almost like fizzy. It's yeah. weird. It's really it's, weird. It's very specific. It's almost like trying to describe what umami smells like. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I can see what you're talking about now. But that's what I think makes it into, like, a butterfly scent, you mm-hmm. know, instead there of, like, like, a caterpillar scent. There's, or, a, yeah. there's definitely a lift to it. It's a little sweeter than I was expecting also, mm-hmm. just from the ingredients. But, I mean, I should that shouldn't be a surprise, because, like, tonka bean and amber can be sweet, and, like, nutmeg really plays to the mm-hmm. sweetness. Yeah, I really, really, really like this. Like, a lot. Like, there's also, like, a... There's, like, a... You know how, like, certain certain colognes that lean towards like warm like almost cozy yeah but it's not like um we're gonna be like hanging out in grandpa's like study it's not that yeah it doesn't feel like tethered to a particular human personality or place or anything like Mm -mm. it's kind of like definitely held into kind of a fantasy realm and there's a worldly quality to it too i think maybe it might be the the combination of sweetness and spice of like um like, what is it to be not necessarily a merchant, but somebody who um, is in conversations with lots of different people from all over the place, which is really like the butterfly's role. Right, in the play. Right? Yeah, or in the, in the play. In, in, the movie, <laughs> in the movie, in the book, in the story. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's funny because the butterflies kind of like integrate the human world and pass through and around and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought about that when I was driving home from Arizona recently, like driving through some kind of butterfly migration where there oh. were just butterflies careening at my windshield for like 30 minutes. Wow. And I was like, oh, you're not supposed to be here. You would think you could go higher over the freeway. Yeah. But, um, but it's funny how 
they're and they're because of that though they're one of the first animals that we learn about as a kid also mm -hmm. because it's just like a, they're around they, yeah we're weirdly interdependent which is why it's so terrible that humans like dropped our end of the bargain for example whereas the butterflies have done everything they can to uphold theirs the other thing that's coming through is like the sweetness of of um nectar mm. yes like i totally get that yeah, like what is a butterfly sipping on? Literally all the live long day, it's nectar. Gin and juice. <laughs> <laughs> That's just in my brain because I bought Snoop Dogg's gin and juice because it was on clearance at Ralph's. And I almost panicked and bought every bottle they had because it was just like really cheap. And I'm like, this will come in handy for parties. And then I remembered that there aren't parties anymore. So now we just have one bottle of Snoop Dogg's branded like gin and juice in the freezer. You, know, you never know when you're going to have an emergency. <laughs> and look, after having tasted it, I will tell you that it would have to be an emergency. <laughs> so we um, now we're up to the star, the diva herself, the last unicorn perfume oil. This one I remember like with great fondness because I, it was one of the more unusual scents I had ever smelled back when it was originally available. Deep breath. Frosty lilac petals, iris palita root, oris, violet leaf, white chocolate, coconut, wild lettuce, white sandalwood, white gardenia, and oak moss, wow. and raisins. Just kidding, no raisins in this one. <laughs> Unicorns don't eat, so... That's why I love the white let the wild lettuce that's in there because it's like maybe she would like just nibble the wild lettuce, you know, the kind of way like that like a really pretty person at a party will like hold like an appetizer but you don't really see them eating it because they don't want to sacrifice their lipstick. It's their just drink, like a, their drink is never empty, and it's like, is it because everybody is always refreshing their drink, or is it because they're not drinking? They're just too pretty to drink. So there's just something so strange and wild about this. And there's like, like fantastical. There's something like immediately buttery about it for me. Where it's like, it's like a cookie, but not a cookie your grandmother would give you. Yeah. But like a cookie that would like just like magically appear next to your head because you took, you like fell asleep under the right tree. Yeah. And you and shouldn't like, eat that cookie. You definitely should not eat that cookie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's tempting. I think that's gotta be like, it's like the oris um, and the white chocolate and the coconut, and the coconut. in there. But then mm -hmm. there's something about the p immediate positioning to like the things like the white sandalwood, the wild lettuce, where it's like kind of woody vegetal, mm -hmm. like oak moss, where it's like, it's such a smooth slider bar mm -hmm. into the realm of like, uh, you know, the inedible yeah or like that oak moss it's like it's conferring a very specific you know how there's like a smell by a beach that has a lot of seaweed mm -hmm. and it's almost the same as the smell whenever you're deep in a woods that has like a sufficient quantity of like leaf mold yes it's that right right and the frostiness of it too when it says frosty lilac petals there's definitely this like cool dew over it mm -hmm. which is so strange like it has a kind of a weird opalescent quality oh my god opalite actually would be a perfect like like if you're synesthetic in terms of like crystals like i feel like this is it's like opalite set in an unusual metal for yeah. something like opalite so like brass that's what in in, in julie uh, Julie Dillon's artwork for this I really see that too because mm -hmm. there's just like um, a picture of the unicorn in the woods but it's all kind of in the same dreamy palette like it really there's like an iridescence to it that comes from smelling like lilac coconut and wild lettuce in the same in the same scent like yeah. I'm literally like looking at this like holographic not holographic whatever iridescent whatever like yeah. makeup case that's over there yep and like it's like that but instead of being made of plastic it's made of like flower petals and mist. I, to me, this is like what the last unicorn smells like after like a light workout. You know, like mm -hmm. there's something kind of like, like, uh, and then this, it sounds gross, but like having ridden a lot of horses growing up and like mm -hmm. there's something about that sweaty horse smell mm -hmm. that's not unpleasant in the slightest, you know? Like you, it's, it's, it's more very of like alive. a. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or when it rained here, that was like last week, it like rained in Los Angeles. I missed it. And, oh, it was amazing because then it's like going for a walk right after it had rained everything like everything smelled incredible like there i have um fragrant geraniums oops no. i'm listening okay. i just happened to lose yeah. the lid um there, have some of this yeah there are fragrant geraniums like right outside my kitchen window and just my entire house smelled like geraniums was that a knock on our door 
because there's enough nearby. I really get the, so like the thing that always fascinated me about this is that I really get the lettuce. Like I get the white chocolate, the coconut and the lettuce and, and this should be mentally incongruous and because it's a unicorn and because I've read the book, there's something about it that just isn't. It's, it's like, just like some weird um, glade. It's like, you know that there's some level of recognition and resonance, but whatever, it, like whoever it is that you're speaking with has such a different worldview and history that there's just permanently going to be a chasm between you and that person yes but it's not like an utter sorrow of a chasm it's like a bitter sweetness of like wow i can't believe i get to witness this chasm yes and that's why i think it's fascinating that this is kind of like a kind of a, on the perfumerier end for the collection <laughs> and it's kind of very glamorous and sheer and it has this effortless beauty to it which is like what I think a lot of, it's like the fantasy of beauty, you yeah. know? And I feel like this is the scent of like what I think I would feel like if I ever met Tilda Swinton. Uh, or I got to see her sleeping in that box. Didn't she do that? Yeah. She slept yeah. in a glass case at a museum. It was yeah. Like... Yeah, and then the person who ever like got to clean the case after she left for the day probably leaned in and smelled the pillow and it smelled like this. It smelled like this, yeah. Yeah, there's just and there something... was like and like Tilda Swinton's like sleep sweat somehow is opalescent. She just makes crystals like a bird or a lizard. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's just like a really like a real far away like romance to it, and it has like a distant quality, like you're mm -hmm. saying, like there's just like a veil, you mm -hmm. know, and you can smell the veil and barely sense like what's on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So I love that we're this is a series of extremely abstract perfume reviews. Yeah. And you have no choice but to love it. Mm -hmm. And to subscribe for more. Make sure you hit like. Oh, please just like everything. Please like something today. If you don't like us, like someone. Like something. Um, the last one that we have to discuss is the lilac wood, which we were missing mm -hmm. this morning, and I had to drive all the way to North Hollywood to go acquire a bottle of it. Now, in the story, is this, correct me if I'm wrong, this is where the last unicorn begins? This is yeah. her home. Where she's been for, like... Millions of years, you know, nobody knows how old the unicorns are including her including her because she doesn't really pay attention to time But when you're that beautiful, you don't have to pay attention to things like time Yeah, and what's beautiful about the lilac wood is just like the unicorn just sort of is perpetually in that youth state But it's not youth as in childishness. Yeah, it's youth as in not aging Right the lilac wood maintains that as long as she's there and then she spends like almost no time in it for the entire book. Right. So it's like this kind of lost um, youth and lost innocence. It's very Edenic. So, and the scent is ageless trees, ever blooming flowers, brilliant grass, and a flicker of fireflies and soft shadows. And what I think is funny about this description, someone actually, when we re-released these, wrote and was like, could you be like more specific? Because it just says things like flowers and shadows and trees. And this is something that the lab does sometimes, especially to protect um, our formulas. Like, no, sometimes we're not more specific. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, we don't want to create something that, that we think would be, like, easy to copy. or for. And also, like, there's a way, there's something about, like, you have to just enter the mystery. You have to enter someone else's fantasy. I know that's frustrating sometimes, especially in a world where, for consumers, you're used to being able to know everything about a product, you know? And, like, mm -hmm. especially for, for perfumes, even, like... You can look up on Fragrantica any like mainstream perfume and see all 600 notes like or whatever. Yeah. Not that you'll be able to detect most of them, but um, so anyway. Uh, I was gonna say the other thing I think about knowing the exact notes of a perfume is sometimes that will then click your brain into trying to pick out all of the notes that's instead true. of allowing to for just like the complete experience of the combination of things, because I think this is one of the things that Beth actually does really well when she's composing is um, creating perfumes that are very much more than the sum of their parts. That's true. So for, for sure, knowing the scent notes is sometimes less useful than knowing the feeling sense. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's an important part of it. It's like, it's, there are so many reasons why it's just like in some instances best for us to like put as few details as possible. Right. <sighs> but that's why we're here to smell it and describe it for you. Yeah. So, this, to me, like, I'm smelling like it's a dawn smell, for sure. It smells like, um, 
like the immediate thing because there's like a there's like a lavender lilac combination that's happening that's it's definitely like if you're synesthetic it like definitely smells pale purple yes like like silvery pale purple but like um the immediate image i have is like a grandmother who has refound like a specific core part of her like girlhood self and is maintaining that girlhood self hmm. I mean, there is, like, a real... Because it's, like, the combination of, like, age and also youth, like, in the same yeah. blend. Where, like, I mean, it's, like, a very eternal thing. Which is funny, because that's where I think we're getting, like, the old trees. Mm-hmm. I mean, it says ageless trees, but that means, you know, that doesn't like mean they, young. Like, that means very old. Yeah. Again, like, what is... It's not youthfulness. It's not agingness. There is, like, this thing. It's, like, uh, it's like the, you know, the Beauty and the Beast Rose situation, mm-hmm. where you're just, like... There's yeah. a fragility to it, like the the agelessness of it, like ha- reveals some kind of like magical power. But there's also this like weird sense of like how delicate it is. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm even thinking of, um, like whenever people create those like very beautiful things out of spun sugar, but it's not sweet. It's just like that awareness of like th- this is beautiful. It is constructed. It is rare. And in too humid of circumstances, it will dissipate. Right. Like, I, when you were saying that, I even got this... It's like a flashback to, like, the glass menagerie. Like, the mm-hmm. same concept, where it's, like, these, like, extremely finely created, delicate things that can be treasured forever, but it just takes, like, one flip of the tray to, to break everything. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. in terms of, like, actually what's in here, I do smell the grass. Mm-hmm. It's, like, a really kind of, like, lush, um, not, like, mown grass just kind of like a wild grass. I don't know what a flicker of flyer f- firefly smells like. I might think that it could be like an amber that's in there. Um, it's not an overly sweet smell. There's like just enough kind of, um, there's like a hint of sweetness that is I think coming up to kind of like color the image in like mm-hmm. a sort of a nostalgia. Um, it's it's definitely like a really um, heady like floral yeah blend you know those violet candies those Mm -hmm. like old school style violet candies so there's like a like almost a powdery quality Mm -hmm. but it's like um like i'm imagining like little like woodland sprites who dress up and they use pollen as powder ah i'm gonna try some of this on yeah yeah does that work i don't know i don't think it does at least not for humans. I don't think you should go, like, put your face in a flower. To I'm not going to tell sprites what to do. Yeah. Sprites can do what they want. Oh, wow. So on the skin, immediately, it just became greener for me. Maybe I've just, like, sat and smelled it long enough to where some of the floral notes might... I've gotten adjusted to it. I mean, if you're not... So if you're a floral lover, I think this is, of course, like... Definitely. It's worth trying. Extremely if you're afraid of florals, this won't hurt you. But, like, just know. I mean, it's Ooh, called it the lilac like wood. Yeah. It's a lot grassier. Yeah. Like, um, it's like freshly mown grass, but freshly mown grass, like in the like early to late springtime when the grass is like really healthy and hasn't dried out at all. Like there isn't that like late summer hay fever grassiness. It's like the early, early enough to still be cool, like really, really cool in the morning. There is a nice like humidity to it. And honestly, um, what I think is so cool is there's like room to explore in here. Like Mm -hmm. what's the way it's crafted, like you're never necessarily smelling mm-hmm. all of it at the same time. It changes so much even just become like getting a few inches away from it on the skin. So yeah, um, I, I can smell the trees more, which I think is some of the humidity mm-hmm. is coming from also. Yeah, like the aspiration mm-hmm. of like a lot of healthy, well hydrated plants. Which in Southern California, we wouldn't know anything about. I mean, I come from a woodland place. You do, yes. I come from a woodland place. Right. You come from a desert place. I come from the dust. Mm. I think that this is one of those things where in the bottle, if I was smelling it, I might have thought, like, this is too too much flowers for me. Too much, too many flowers. On the skin, it weirdly, like, smooths out, and I really get a sense of just, like, a beautiful... It, it reminds me of going to, like, oh. the Huntington Gardens or something, where there's just, like, mm-hmm. a, like, um, like a path to follow through different, different experiences. Different... Um, different like ecological spaces but like carefully constructed to be 
as like maximally healthful as possible like healthy ecological spaces does that make sense oh yes just like um it's like that beautiful it's like it reminds me of how um like in tarot like the empress and like everything mm. that a garden is supposed to entail yes. in terms of like a just specifically constructed to be as like beautiful and nourishing as possible yeah. it also reminds me a little bit of some of the sense that we've done to evoke new orleans the city mm. for those of you who don't know that's a city um that where there's just like this sense of just like everything like bursting it's out like and like so shadows alive, yeah so rich mm -hmm. right where you know if anything it's like the consequences of um like really rich soil so you don't get the soil scent at all no in this. there's no there's no earth like like actual like dark earth um but there is the sense that it's present in that everything is so just like flourishing it's a sense of flourishing yeah like green flourishing but and there's like... something kind of warm about it which is kind of an interesting contrast because mm. we just smelled the unicorn which has this like cool quality you know mm -hmm. where it's just like um like the, more of an evening brew and this is much more like the sun is coming up things are uncurling things are warming up you know mm -hmm. so um that's like a fun contrast how do i even try to language this but how do i language it, i'm no peter s beagle it's like permanent springtime yeah really which, and, who doesn't want permanent spring? And there's something really clean about it, too, because we were talking before about Schmendrick and how he smelled clean, but in kind of like a huge, like, you know, I don't know, like, like there was like that hippie quality about it mm -hmm. where it was like the human world, and this is just like a weirdly clean fantasy of nature. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uncorrupted. Like, you know, we were talking about Mommy Fortuna having that kind of corrupted thread. Yes. This is like complete... Like, even smelling them in contrast, these are completely different places. Yes. Right? Like, there's no deception with the lilac woods. No. That's what I think is so interesting about, like, because I know a lot of people don't like florals, but, like, fl a floral perfume is, like, weirdly honest to mm -hmm. me because it just, like, it is what yeah. it is saying it is, you know? And a lot of the notes that, like, people gravitate toward in scent um, are really, like, a fantasy version like that like you know for even things like apple and like mm -hmm. other things like you're still chasing like a particular fantasy or kind of apple um and i think with a lot of like florals and scents like these are it's it's a very old collaboration between humans and flowers in terms mm -hmm. of like um we just like associate them with smelling exactly like they do and then right. we want that scent uh, to be close to us you know so, I mean, you know, it's not it's for like everybody. No, there's no pretense with flowers. <sighs> there's none. This is why I always think it's so funny why I love wearing rose perfumes. I'm like, being like, if you're like a rose perfume wearer, you're just like that bitch, basically. You're like the kind who would wear pearls to a dinner party or a veil to a funeral. There's just like, yeah. you're just doing the thing. Yeah, without um, self-questioning. Right, right. Whereas yeah. other people might feel like that it's like a costume they're putting on, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, some people just are that bitch. So, which it turns out I am. <sighs> Thank God. <sighs> I'm, it took me long enough to get here, but I'm here. Yeah. So, so these five are the, currently the only five that are available on mm -hmm. um, the website. Uh, we're going to be releasing the next batch of five in the future, um, hopefully soon. I don't have a timeline for it. Um, and I think we had, were there 30 total at one point? There were a lot. There I were a lot. I remember, actually, like, I think Beepal's last unicorn series, I didn't acquire any of the first ones when they were out, but I was lucky enough to get <laughs> the Amorous Tree okay. via the Etsy at one point, but, um, and then a friend of mine immediately spilled a third of the bottle on her um, in a time period when she was very um, thirsty, you could say. Really <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Just like reading through the descriptions of the last unicorn series when it came out like the first time, that's what immediately just like glued me to Black Phoenix forever. It's a, it is a a really big thing. Like they're mm -hmm. not everyone is into the last unicorn, but it has this obsessive following. And there's something about mm -hmm. the lab between like things like some of the Gaiman novels, mm -hmm. um, and then like this and a few other things where it's like specific properties that really signal to to certain people like this is a big deal yeah and i find that so funny because mm -hmm. when i talk about my job or i'm like trying to explain what we do and i mention some of these things to people who are not into those things and don't even necessarily realize the massive mm -hmm. fandom around some yeah. of these areas 
they just don't really get it and they're like oh how what a what a fun little niche to occupy and i'm like it's not little that niche is <laughs> substantial yeah it's uh, it's a very exciting thing to be able to do and then um you know obviously we have more stuff coming up that we'll be reviewing galen will be coming back to help me review the upcoming dragon con convention exclusives which there will be and we are going to apparently despite all odds i'm trying to think if there's anything last things that we should say thank you for having me here oh my god this thank is just, you like beautiful thank this you. is what we wanted to do from the beginning except for we were unable i mean like back when we started filming these videos i was mm -hmm. like and someday hopefully soon we'll be able to have like people mm -hmm. to talk to about these things and it was not possible for just a very long time but so thanks for super duper vaccination and ongoing caution yes this is somewhat possible for now yeah. so we'll be doing a little more of this i would you know love to have you come back and talk about perfumes more um and also about astrology which i know virtually nothing about so you'll yeah. be like talking it's like you'll be like making small talk with like someone at a bus stop who's mm -hmm. just like i mean that's honestly one of the best conversations is just like <laughs> you encounter a stranger and they just geek out mm -hmm. and that's a highlight of a month right there this is why I'm afraid of talking to people on airplanes now because um, chances are they're going to like be very like you know just to like a random person if I like mm -hmm. if they're asking me questions about what I'm doing I'm going to seem interesting yeah and I'm not ready for the attention oh but you, what you do is you come up with the most boring possible alternate title for what you do <sighs> like I am an um, I can't think of anything that would be boring for you but sometimes I think about if I'm out in the world and I don't want to tell someone I'm an astrologer, I'm just revealing my secrets here. I might say <laughs> that I'm um, a cultural astronomer. Fascinating. Which is like just weird enough that someone who's actually interesting will be like, oh, what's that? Yeah. And everybody else will be like, click out. Right. Right. They yeah. immediately unsubscribe from the email. Yeah. Um, I, I love the idea of doing like a norm core form of traveling too, where I just like dress very normal and people are like, so what are you in? And I'm like, you know um marketing marketing for cosmetics people will be like well that sounds interesting and i'm like it's not you know but it is but it really is as evidenced by the scintillating video which you have now reached the end of look at you uh thank you so much for watching thank you diana for sitting and smelling all these things with me thank you galen for midwifing this video content into creation please subscribe to our channel for we shall be doing more of this in the future um, and have done so in the past. And you can go watch all of that if you want to. Um, you should. You know, you don't need to be working right now. No. Just go take a long bathroom break and watch YouTube on your headphones. So, okay. Well, that's all for now, everyone. Happy last unicorn collection. Until next time.